All right, everyone, welcome back. That was relatively quick. Um, if you're watching this on YouTube, you have no reference for how long it took, but I'm going to tell you, it was very quick. We are into round two of tonight's a Friday Night Magic Standard Tournament from Lost Legion Games and Comics in South Charleston, West Virginia. We are uh, looking at two 1-0 players. On the left, the aforementioned... Uh, everyone has a Zach Vinyanko at their store. <laughs> everyone has a guy who just likes to have fun, and he likes to play weird decks. And uh, Zach has... Uh, I asked him what deck he was playing when he first came in tonight, uh, and it was like about, about three minutes later he was done telling me the name of his <laughs> deck. It is uh, it is blue-green. It features Defender Ramp, which I imagine is the new wall as well as the... Isn't there another guy that gives you mana based on the number of defenders yet? X-Bang Guardian, Yeah, it's like a, it's like yeah. a um, overgrown battlement type effect. Yeah. Um, so it's that ramp, and he is winning the game, uh, preferably from one of two ways, by casting a giant primal surge and, and dumping his entire library onto the field, or activating Jordan Nothingness. I will tell them they're ready. Whoa! Whenever you're ready. I forgot that I told them to uh, remind me I'll have to uh, adjust that camera now that I've just uh, kicked the entire table around. So he's playing a blue-green uh, ramp deck with Primal Surge and Door to Nothingness. I'm assuming with the Chromatic Lantern in it. Uh, I don't really understand how he's going to activate the door other than that. But uh, I believe the uh, the mana also uh, off the X Bang is. Oh, it's uh, uh, any color. Yeah. Okay. So so maybe that's how he's going to do it. He's playing John Dunlap, another of our regulars here at the store, who's playing a much much easier to define green-white human deck. So. Should be, uh, all I can say is I hope that it's not nearly as aggressive such that Zach's deck doesn't have a chance. Uh, yeah, so, thanks, thanks to those of you who have uh, waited for us to come back from, uh, from the break. I know we lose a lot of people every time because of, uh, anytime we put up like a splash screen in between rounds, people, uh, everyone has a little uh, short attention span, myself included. Okay, so we see a fog bank come down. Uh, I don't know. Fog bank is a very solid card. I'm always amazed why it doesn't see more play. I guess pe everyone's playing Pillar of Flame these days, but uh, I don't know. It's very tough to remember. Like, I tell you right now, John Stack probably has three three cards in it that can get rid of it if he's playing three Oblivion Rings. Yeah. So he's had the perfect start here with the turn one. Pilgrim into turn two Thalia and turn three Silverblade Paladin. Not sure what it's paired with. I can only assume it's the Thalia. So. I really want to see an X Men Guardian here. Oh, uh, I really want to see a Primal Surge. Is that the X Men Guardian? Yes, that is okay. the X Men Guardian. So I will use my technology to bring that up. If nothing else tonight, you know, we're going to show people things that they hadn't expected to see out of this. Uh, <laughs> when you woke up this morning, you didn't you didn't get out of bed thinking, you know what I'm going to see today? Axe Main Guardian. Yep, so it is basically a, uh, as we see, Gather the Humans resolve for, uh, ah, Zach Galeonko helping us out with the, <laughs> uh, as he re realizes that the, uh, it's the Pilgrim is now paired, so. Going to block the Paladin. Probably just, uh, there's no reason not to block the Pilgrim, right? Yeah, I mean, yeah. Or he, he blocked the uh, Thalia. So John just gets in there for uh, for two. Uh, he, I mean, the, the human stack can be playing Selesnia Charm, so there is that potential blowout, but I mean, he was tapped out for it. So that's the, that's the worst drawback to the... Turn two gather is perfect. Turn three or four gather after you've played your own Thalia. Not nearly as fun, because it does it. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes there's things in the chat I can't repeat. <laughs> so, it's just, so Zach does miss his... Uh, I have no idea what that card is. Any of you gentlemen can tell me what that card is? I, I know, do not make I know that out. I know your screen is slightly... Uh, but I'm going, to, I'm going to assume it's something with Defender. If anyone in the chat wants to... Uh... Is that the Doorkeeper? Mm -hmm. It may be. They're saying it's Test Subject in the Lumix chat. Test Subject? Oh, oh it is. Yeah, oh, wow. that's a like goodness. <laughs> that's a good thing to dump mana into. But it yeah. is Defender. I mean, he's going to untap and have 
One, two, three, four. He's gonna have eleven mana. He can he can surge next turn. Uh, have we seen it in his hand? Or oh, I don't know. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna live in a world where it's in his hand, so I can <laughs> yeah. just be excited. Yeah. Next don't block anything. Just take it. <laughs> well, he's tapped out, so there's no tricks, right? Because uh -uh. Audric doesn't. As we we missed the Audric there that came down. Audric doesn't trigger unless he attacks, right? It's he and three other creatures. Mm -hmm. At that point, uh, John can basically win the game because he can assign whatever blockers he wants, which I'm assuming he's going to assign no one blocking. <laughs> So I'm going to take some damage here. I should go out there and explain to them how to use that thing. They've got it. It's intuitive. So, he does have enough mana to Primal Surge here. And for those of you just joining us, uh, Zach is playing a very fun deck. He got through his first round. So there's some... Uh, some questions in the chat about uh, life totals and whatnot. For those of you who've watched in the past, you'll know that one thing that I try not to do as best I can is to interfere with the match. If there's some blatant mistakes, I try to let them know. But uh, it's just very difficult because we're not. Uh, while we are watching fairly closely, and there are three of us in here, we don't miss. We don't catch everything. And the last thing we want to do is uh, make these fine gentlemen who've agreed to be our our guinea pigs. So, we'll just have to let them sort it out. They're big boys. They're wearing Big Bang Theory t-shirts. <laughs> it's Skeleton versus Sheldon. Are we still in Bang. Zach's turn? Are they still considering what to do? Yeah. Uh, that is one thing I will point out about uh, Zach. Is, uh, he's a great guy. We love having him here. Very deliberate player. Yes. He will not be, he will not be <laughs> winning any awards for speed play. <laughs> Yeah, well, and he is, like I said, he is in law school. He's studying to be a lawyer. This is a very good trait to have when one is uh, advancing a legal profession. I want my lawyer to be fast. <laughs> you, want the, you want the Usain Bolt I don't, legal professionals. I don't have all day. You just go down, you just go in and look. I got, a, I got a contested divorce. I'm suing my wife. Watch your, for, watch your 40 time. You're boring me with all your reading. <laughs> Hurry up. I'm ask you two questions. What's your retainer fee? And how fast can you run the 40? <laughs> He has activated an Axe Man Guardian mm -hmm. for mana. Mm -hmm. It looks like he's got four defenders out, so... Mm -hmm. So we see, oh, I mean, he's got good cards in there too, not just all defenders. <laughs> As we see Jace Architect of Thought come down, I assume... Oh, is that a trading post in his deck? Oh, he just has like every card that's fun to play with in his deck. <laughs> I don't know how good it is or not. That is, a good, that is an interesting take on deck building. Um... What are the most it's fun a, cards? So, so, you like, so basically, at the tier one, you have the Jund deck, which is basically just every good card in those three colors jammed into one deck. It's not linear at all. It's just very good cards. And then uh, on the other end, you have Zach's uh, happy, feel-good, fun <laughs> deck, which is every cool card <laughs> jammed into one deck, including Guild of Lotus. <laughs> so he has infinite mana. Yeah. Did he? Did he minus the chase? Or did you? See, he didn't. He I don't didn't. know if he's activated it yet at all. Okay. So here comes the trading post. <laughs> he has a thousand permanents. I don't know how he must have minus he must have plus one the Jace because he didn't. If he, he passes the turn he plus one the yeah. yeah. But doesn't the Audric here just blow him out? Rancor and a silver blade. It's possible, but I don't think he can how oh, did he put I don't know. I don't think that he can kill him here necessarily. So um he does have access to unlimited mana and a mini factor fiction next turn. Is he attacking without yeah, he's I was wondering why would he have why wouldn't he have attacked with the uh <laughs> Zach's running <laughs> So the Silver Blade is a four power double striker with trample. So but Andrik lets you assign blockers, right? Yeah. Did he just miss that? No, I think they're totaling up the damage. Not sure what happened there. But, but uh, Audric lets you choose blocks, so wouldn't you just have him all block one creature and then just get everything else in? Or was that the way it worked? Maybe it was like that. So I think there were two, no, I think there three, were no four, blocks. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I don't I don't know how that worked. 
I'm just going to assume that they know how to do it. Because I'm, I'm somewhat lost. Like I said, both these players are 1-0. and If he's dead on board, he's got to find the Primal Surge, right? I believe that is his those are None of those cards are good. So, another defender. The or the two card. Uh-oh. My phone battery is dying. I forgot to plug it in. It's on my phone. It's on my iPod touch. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot to plug it in earlier today. It's a one-man show over here. I can, I can only remember so much. Yeah. So we see the gate creep. That, that goes and fetches a gate, right? Yeah. Or a basic lamp. It looks like uh, the chat is clearing it up for us. They said, uh, Audric assigned no blocks, but uh, everything had... Minus, Minus one, one from, from Jace. Jace. So. so, so I guess that was the, the total there. So we see the uh, Simic Guild Gate. Is that what it's called? All the gates are called after the after the. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, that's the uh, Golgari. The Golgari. So there's a black in there. <laughs> now we're still waiting for the Simic Guild Gate. Yeah, and I'm yeah. excited. <laughs> I completely, I can completely lost. Is that what your is your yeah. uh, Guild of Choices Simic? Yeah. What are you in? Uh, I'm, unaffiliated. I'm a, I'm a Demir. <laughs> You're Demir. <laughs> and I am Boros, and I lament this all the time. Anyone who follows me on Twitter knows how upset I am because the Boros is a guild symbol. It's just a, it's just a white power. Like, <laughs> yeah. 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 Everyone else has some cool, like, you know, the Simic one is like this tree, but it's also watery, yeah. and Demir is like a scary spider thing, and it's just a white fist. <laughs> well, well, if you remember, it could be like a flame or something. Why does it have to just be a sign of racial hate? Well, if you remember, uh, the uh, the keyword for Boros in the original Ravnica was what, radiance. Or yes, it was radiance. It, it, it color mattered. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's all we're saying. It's unfortunate. So Zach could not get there. He had infinite mana and nothing to do with it. Like I said, he is playing Primal Surge in this deck, and every every card in his library will flip if he resolves that spell. So. All I ask is that uh, he did it twice in the last game, off camera. If you're watching around one, he stormed in here and got very mad at us. I think he was the one who yelled my name. Oh, that's right. <laughs> Mystery one. solved. <laughs> yeah, around one, someone just screamed my given name. As you know, at Lost Legion, it is tradition for when your combo goes off to scream Zachary at us. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to... You guys talk about magic real quick while I go out there and explain how my technology works. Oh. <laughs> The Life Total app used on Zachary Evans' iPod Touch is the Life Counter app, which I believe is no longer available from the App Store. Uh, no, I believe most of those have actually been taken down. So. Yeah. Oh, really? Because I downloaded it a couple years ago, and I find it very useful. I like the big, blocky numbers. Well, especially for something like this. I mean, you know, it, a lot larger than a lot of the other ones. Like the one that I currently use, it's small. Oh, yeah. And, you, I mean, it's... A, you slide with it, it's not too bad, but, I mean, you're always having to pick up the touch and kind of look at it for a second and be like, okay, what's it say? <laughs> That's the, the, that exact life total app is the only way I track my life when I play Magic. Yeah, we actually get uh, a million questions about that as I realize I have not, um, not done the time at all. It's so much 26 seconds left, 26 minutes left. <laughs> Uh, it doesn't matter. That's not <laughs> about right. <laughs> it really doesn't because uh, I w I'm always wrong because there's no... I can't see the... First of all, they don't have a round clock here. Second of all, even if they did, I wouldn't be able to see it. Uh, so when JB calls out, 20 minutes left in a round, I'll just change it to 20. <laughs> we only really need to know at the end. You don't need to know it. It's like, it's like they say in sports. It doesn't matter who wins the first half. It's who wins the second half. Assuming your game of choice has halves. If you're talking about baseball, then you're just a crazy person. Everything has halves. Mm -hmm. If it's measured in time, it has half of that time. <laughs> it does have half of that time. Even if it's not celebrated or demarked in any way. So, um, back to the action here. We have just witnessed the fall of one Zach Vilyanko, whose blue-green Primal Surge combo deck uh, could not find the namesake card. It had every, every resource it needed to combo off, but could not find the... Uh, the win condition. It had all the mana, but yeah, not actually, all the cards. Actually, Door to Nothingness would have won there, too. Yeah, he because had, yeah, he had plenty of mana. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so he's... Ah, uh, does Door to Nothingness... It enters the battlefield. enters the battlefield tap, taps, right? he said. Yeah. It's like the old Nevin Earl's disc. you got to wait one, one turn for your pending doom. So what happens when he flips his entire library into uh, the battlefield? Do you want to know something very fun? 
I have no idea. <laughs> so <laughs> we're all seen gonna, we're, I mean, something will work. Something will happen, I'm sure. Hmm. Uh, but I just wonder what his, how he wins that turn. Uh, I, I'm sure there's a way. He wouldn't have built it that without this. <laughs> my only goal was know. to flip my deck and then lose next turn because I can't draw a card. Maybe so, a uh, crater hoof behemoth? Or? Yeah, but, that, but to talk about that little life total app, you clued me into that uh, life count. I got that iPod Touch for Christmas about four years ago. You yourself clued me into that. It's, it's in my estimation, a superior way to keep track of your life total. It is very functional. Also, um, it's called simply life total. It was available in the App Store three years ago. Someone is asking, there, there have been more than one or two people who have asked me, like, what it is and how they can get it. I, all I know is that it's called Life Total. I got it from the App Store. It was literally three years ago. And it's not it's not available anymore. But, I mean, I'm sure there are approximations. So just go to Never it. have I seen one. It's clean and beautiful. Yeah. Also, um, as you can see, like, <laughs> I like to talk about the Life Total app a lot. As you can see, the numbers point at the various players, mm -hmm. and usually about once per Magic Tournament, I uh, it, I will win a game because my opponent is at six life and they think they're at nine life. Mm. So, so you're, very you're, good. <laughs> you're angle shooting at the FNM with your life total. It's counter. very good. All right, so we're, we're peeling out here. I did see Surge in Zach's hand that time, but uh, not nearly enough resources. He deemed for the rest of it. Uh, interesting tonight, we do have... I think there's at least three deck lists in the room. I have been handed three separate deck lists from individuals. So it's always nice to see. People are always very concerned. Here's what I've found out about Magic. Uh, people just want to... They just want the deck lists. <laughs> there's no point... I mean, this is not like a new uh, revelation by any means, but I don't understand why people write articles about Magic, because unless it's like a tournament report or something completely off the topic, they, people just scroll down until there's the deck list. <laughs> so uh, mostly on YouTube, I get a lot of questions about can we get the deck list, so... Uh, should any of these gentlemen make it onto camera, and as I tell everyone every week, the best way to make it on the camera is to win all of your matches. Because <laughs> people want to see the good decks. People want to see the good decks. Uh, one more time. Uh, there's something else I was going to talk about. Um, oh, back to the, back to this. I'm, I'm, it's a very sore spot for me. This uh, Boros Guild Pin thing, because I want to wear. I think it's cool, <laughs> but I can't wear that. I, we, well, listen, we're from West Virginia, not the most racially diverse state in the world. The last thing I can do is traipse around <laughs> town with this flaming white fist on well, my shirt. If anyone hassles you about it being for white power, you can explain to them that it's about a wizard game. <laughs> yes. No, 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 no. You've got it. You've got me completely wrong. This is about an imaginary wizard fighting game that I play with cardboard. Uh, so it's much more acceptable, and not, uh, you won't think less of me for it. I did actually like um. But if, yeah, if you if you prefer nerd hate to racial hate, <laughs> then I believe you can you can defer to that. I think Wizards does have uh, guild T-shirts for sale, and I was looking at them, and I eventually decided that the Simic Guild was the best looking T-shirt because it was the T-shirt that had the least um, dragon on it. Yes. It is the yeah. It's the most actual thing. It is the most real thing. As sad as I am, too old to wear a t-shirt with a dragon on it. Are you too old to wear a t-shirt with three wolves on it? Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> You're not even going to. Uh, no hesitation there. Not even going to hesitate. My clothing can no longer be ironic. <laughs> it has to be. I wish. My clothing has to be taken in I one wish sense. for the life of me. Uh, I'd like to think to a certain extent I've grown out of a lot of my geekdom. Obviously not completely as I am sitting in a broom closet with two grown men. <laughs> <laughs> not, oh, not, no. not, even, not even playing imaginary no. wizard fighting games. I'm watching other people and talking about it. Yeah, um, I show up an hour and a half early so I can set up on my computer. I should say that I will not wear a t-shirt with a dragon on it, but I, um, I will watch people play a wizard battle and talk about it on the internet. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's, you got your standards. That's that's yeah. a good to see. I mean, you're not going to slum it, you know. But, uh, well, what was I going to say? I had a very valid point, but I just completely lost my train of, train of thought. But uh, I'm sure it'll come back to me later on. More importantly, Zach is considering his six-card six hand. Looks like we have, have a keeper. Looks like a pilgrim out of John. The uh, ideal start. No. Oh, no wall from uh, Zach is of concern. Yeah. I don't know if he's playing Farseek or not. don't really know. Uh, obviously, you can't fix your mana since uh, Breeding Pool has not yet been printed, but you do get in for three with a rank Ford Pilgrim. <laughs> Yikes. He's not the first person to take a beating from Pilgrim, so... <laughs> no. I believe there's a... Uh, Rancor Birds is a... Uh, is a... Uh, Rancor Birds of... Rancor BOP, I think, is a Twitter account that you can follow. <laughs> Birds of Paradise with a Rancor on it. 
I am so, curious about the thoughts and feelings of a bird of paradise with rain. What is that thing? Zach is killing me over here with uh, his very unusual cards. Mm -hmm. He's making me. Uh, yeah, I don't know what that card is. Do you know what it is? I can, I can is it investigate the doorkeeper? No, it's a three mana. I don't know. You mentioned that last the last game. I don't know what a doorkeeper is. It's, it's a it's a, it's a, a, it's a character Rick Moranis played. And goes <laughs> yes, yes, that's what I was. <laughs> <laughs> It's, um, it has protection from Zool. <laughs> <laughs> Doorkeeper is a two casting cost zero for wall, and you can mill with it equal to the number of defenders you have. What that was a card I thought might be in his thing. That, yeah, I, that is the test subject again, I believe. Yeah. No, 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 that's not test subject. There's no way that card is test subject. Well, it kind of looks like it's yeah, Galvanic Alchemist. That's... I love the chat. They they keep us on. Honestly, how can you pick out these weird cards because so quickly? Because they, they've drafted with these guys before. They know. John is like all answers all the time over here. He's just going to get in seven times with... Uh... Uh, that's one way he can win. Yeah, you can untap the door and... No, it's a creature. Oh, is it untap? Yeah. Untap everything. Well, we're not going to have Just much. Just generate infinite man. There's not going to be much to talk about if uh, if Zach doesn't get something going here. He he did jinx himself. He said it wouldn't happen now that he was on camera. He can buy a turn with that. Well, but I mean, all of his all of his creatures are defenders. That the uh, what's that called? The I mean, I know what it does. Gate creeper vine. Gate creeper vine is 04, isn't it? It's 02. 02? Yeah, it's 02. yeah, it's not a very useful. So it's like the worst rampant growth. Yeah. <laughs> oh well. Not even a rampant growth. It's a Sylvan Ranger. Yeah. Would you rather have the one one or the O two? Uh, First world problems. It's just gonna kill me all night. What I was gonna say a minute ago when I lost my train of thought. So we see uh, the uh, the red guild gate come in. Is it guild gate? He should block the, uh... I'm not sure what happened there. Don't you just block the, uh... The Fiend Hunter? Because it can't kill it, right? It's 1-3. Saves your Defender guy. What are you going to do, Zach? I'm going to be so sad if, if we don't get to see... Things are looking very depressing. A few weeks ago, we had a Deadeye Navigator combo deck on. Ooh. And it did nothing because of just bad, bad draw, and it was just so, so sad. Now I'm going to have to get, there's not enough time to go find a third match. How much time do you say? I don't know, I didn't hear. I'll be honest, I just said that without... <laughs> <laughs> you just heard him speak and you thought we were running out of time. <laughs> I don't know. But I know if we just keep talking about Modern Masters, then people are just going to turn off and they're going to go watch some random draft 8-4s on uh, yeah. Axe Bane Guardian. Because I don't think he can beat the... Can he beat the Trample? There's another Rancor. I don't think he can win now. Like, isn't that enough? Should be. Yeah. 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 So you know what I'm going to do? If we can get... Oh, we don't have enough room. I want to talk to Zach Vilyanko about this stupid deck of his. It's not stupid. I'm I'm just angry at it now because <laughs> it didn't do what I wanted it to do. But uh, it's very unfortunate, and that's sometimes what happens. This is a good introduction to Legacy. Sometimes you have a deck that does nothing, yeah. and sometimes you have a deck that produces turn one Immercool. Yeah. If anyone knows about that, it is me. Uh, so, unfortunately, uh, Zach's super fun Primal Surge deck did not... Uh, perform nearly as well in game one or in round two as we would have liked it. I don't why don't you gentlemen talk about something and then I'm going to go see if I can find uh, how convenient it would be to slot in another match. Okay. If not we'll just talk about our favorite sandwiches. <laughs> well there is a little bit of modern love in the chat, so I mean we could <laughs> yeah, man, continue I'm... to talk about it. you were at Columbus, I was at Columbus. Oh, yeah. I, I had a great time. No, it was I lost fun. my winning in for day two. Oh really? So, yeah. Oh I did it miserably. <laughs> what did you play in modern? Uh, I had a uh, green white deck that uh, just uh, basically a green white not at the real quarry deck. Yeah. And uh, I mean 
mean, my matchups uh, were. I played Jun three times that day, and I stopped really? Jun three times that oh, day. Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, people are talking that Jun is kind of the menace of the format right now. But, uh, I mean, there's decks out there that can beat it that just have to. With, with Abrupt Decay, it's a little bit harder. Yeah. But after sideboard, you know, especially if you're a white deck, uh, have been, put two Bane Slayer Angels in your sideboard, and when your Jun matchup comes up, they're going to have problems. <laughs> Bane Slayer's been fighting Jun for forever. Yeah. Um, yeah, um, I played a Splinter Twin combo. Um, I like that deck a lot. I didn't do very well, though. Um... So you were just a straight Splinter Twin, you're not the Storm Deck that no, kind of no, pops it was its just, way into Splinter Twin? <laughs> no, just straight Splinter Twin. I see, that's a, it's a deck I have all the pieces for, and I've wanted to try it, but I just haven't. <laughs> I mean, it always seemed like fun. I always wanted to play with Splinter Twin when it was in Standard, and then, you know, we got that opportunity in that very small window at the end of its Standard I, draw. Uh, I, did, it, I did actually play it in Standard. Um, after Jace was banned, I started playing it then. It was it was very good then. Um, it was, I don't know. But uh, I'm very excited about the prospect of draft Modern Masters. I mainly play Limited nowadays, like, um, and the concept of uh, having a deck with, like, Vendillion Click in it is very exciting for me. Oh, yeah, uh, drafting a Vendillion Click, or, yeah, you know, trying to be the guy that drafts the Dredge deck, or even the guy that's crazy enough to go for the Storm deck out of Modern Masters, you know? <laughs> you switched to the studio camera, right? Oh, we could. I found a tree. Found a, tree. a tree was located. <laughs> it is, uh, our viewers will be very excited yeah. by this treat. Do you mind if I hang this coat up in here? Or put it up in here? Just put it right there. Thanks, guys. Sure. So here's an interesting thing that happens uh, as you guys are, Ian, you and Joseph are, are finding it out firsthand. But for all our uh, viewers, you are. I, I know I bumped this. Oh no, it's not that bad. Oh goodness. No, no. Uh, the previously mentioned uh, shelving is coming down on us. Um, so anyway, welcome back. I apologize that that round did not go as nearly as as fun as it could have. I was very excited. Game one when it seemed like anything was possible. Yeah, so in game one, if he could just draw a couple cards, he would have been fine. He just needed some way of winning the game. Uh, as most decks need a way to win the game, that's a pro, that's a pro magic tip. That's high quality strategic content, so take that with a grain of salt and use that at your own uh, top tier legacy events. But we were asking earlier, he resolved Primal Surge, everything in this deck is a permanent. How does he win the game? He wins the game with Laboratory Maniac. Oh, and he does have with trading post he can draw that turn, and with multiple trading posts he can draw in response to removal spell as well. So, because obviously when he flips everything onto us, he has infinite mana, yeah. <laughs> and uh, then there's no, you have four trading posts or however many he has, you can you can beat one removal spell. So that would have been very fun. Uh, he said he would he'd love to give it a, another go on the camera. I told him just make the top eight, and uh, we'll make that happen. I'll gladly put him down under again because he'll no doubt be playing someone else who has a. A good deck as well. Uh, so, more importantly, we could not find another match. Um, it looks like we might be done with the round relatively soon. A lot of people are finished. So, it doesn't look like we're going to get another match. I don't know how much time is actually left. There's 11 minutes on my completely unofficial clock. I think there's slightly more than that. So, we will just have to uh, kill time. What were we talking about while I was gone? Oh, yeah, I brought this in. You can't really see it. But for some reason, uh, JB, the, the store has uh, giant cardboard cutouts of the Avengers. So I brought in... That's fine. I don't think you really want to see it. <laughs> <laughs> if you've watched in the past, you, you'll be... Uh... Ian, are you familiar with the Elf Boo poster? No. Uh, well, uh, Joseph, you're familiar, right? Yes. Think, so for the first few weeks of the, of the stream... Because of the aforementioned shelving that is taking up half of our space, we had the camera positioned over directly to my left, so it was shooting this way. Uh, and then we would talk like this. It was not a good setup, but at the time it was all we could do because we just didn't have the room. Uh, and there was on the wall, this is a storage room for the shop, so there's like no reason why anything should be hanging on the walls back here <laughs> because there's not really any, no one, there's no, no one would ever come back here. You wouldn't decorate, you don't decorate like your closet at the house. Yeah. You, Make everything as nice as possible. Okay, but there was a picture hanging on the wall of uh, a... Uh, what's going on? Two visitors are making trouble. Uh, surprise. It's like a... Uh, I, don't, I don't even know. But So there was a uh, poster hanging on the wall from a dice company, and it was this elven chick with, like, of course, because it's a face, it's like, scantily clad, some just, like, disgruntled artist had made it. You know, whatever. So... 
so it's like this elf chick with bare midriff and boots. So, so it was referred to as the elf boo poster. And it took about three weeks before the chat just completely devolved into discussions about the elf boo poster. We're, I mean, it's not like this is something super important to us, and it's not like it's anything close to being like top tier uh, magic content. But like we're trying to we're trying to do our little show here, and everybody's just like, move the elf boo poster down. I want to see your face. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, we had a very interesting debate because half of the viewers wanted to see, they wanted us to move it down so they could see the entire, but other ones wanted us to move it up because, you know, anticipation is a little bit more exciting <laughs> than the payoff, so uh, it's in here somewhere. We'll try to find it. Uh, before the next round, I'll try to find it, so that's an incentive for you to watch. There's still some love for, in the chat for the Elf Boot yeah. poster. She's fondly remembered. Yeah. Uh, I think that particular individual plays here regularly, so they they are more familiar with it than maybe some of you on the chat. Uh, so, let's... Did we ever did we ever come up with uh, a die? No, we did not. I want to give away some free cards. So, what free cards are we giving away every week? For the diligent viewer out there, we give away a playset of rock, paper, scissors cards, which are, are from Unglued, and they do exactly what you think they do. Uh, one is a rock lobster, one is a paper tiger, one is a scissors lizard, and uh, you shuffle them up and you flip them over, and it's a good way to start your game, as opposed to rolling a die. It is fun, and we try to bring that to you by means of a giveaway. I thought you were doing something, but you were texting. I can't. I, will, I started doing. You're something. allowed to text. I'm not finding fault with that. Uh, if you'll just excuse me briefly, I will try to find the card so I can prove to everyone that we are giving them away. That's the. That's what the do you want to roll? I now am a d20 available. Uh, roll for me a d20. We have this week. How, well, let me explain to people how you can win. How do you win the rock paper scissors cards? Very simple. My screen name on Twitter. At Zach Sells Magic. Everything that we have on the internet is at is uh, Zach Sells Magic. Is my username. Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, and Twitch. So you go on there during the second round of every FNM stream. I make a uh, tweet. I will do that uh, right after this round is over. Something to the effect of we're giving away stuff. You follow me. You retweet it every week. All those people go into a drawing, and much like right now, we will draw for a winner. So why don't you roll twenty? There are seventeen runners. For everything, uh, for 18, 19, and 20, we will re-roll, and I will try to give away these bad boys to somebody and send them to your house. Are you ready? I'm ready. This is the official result. Mm -hmm. I'm pressing the button now. I've rolled a six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, my goodness. This uh, is so exciting. Uh, for those of you who watch... Uh, do you listen to any Magic podcasts? I Are you familiar with I, the A-Team? I do know that man. Because uh, Jay one. Bush just won... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Jay Bush just won. Number six. <laughs> one, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, I'm very excited because that is completely... You can confirm. I'm, I want to show this on the thing yeah. so we can just prove there it. There you go. You look at all of the names... Six one down, Jay Boosh. This was not rigged. I'm very excited because that means that means more exposure for a stupid little internet show. Uh, but congratulations to Jay Boosh. I'll be in touch with him shortly after. He won this play set of cards. Do you want to win your own? It's very simple. I got a whole stack of them. I have basically everyone in the world. The joke was not all of them. <laughs> <laughs> uh, pretty soon it may be impossible to get these any other way. Uh, they are not worth a ton. Uh, but they are worth sentimental value. It's very fun. They They're are. Fun it is a superior way to choose who goes first. So we do. That's how we start our games. That's how you should start your game. So if you want to be just like Jay Boosh, um, he's our fifth. I think it's the fifth time we've given it away. Five sets of happy people. Mm -hmm. uh, more importantly, you can win your own. I'll do that uh, tweet right after this round is over when we take a break. So look for that. Uh, also coming up in later rounds, the promo Restoration Angel will be given away. If you're not as excited about a, a kitschy little um, theme cards as you are about cards that cost $15, then stay tuned for how to win a Restoration Angel. Gentlemen, we still have some time left. Much like every week, we have lost uh, about 20% uh, of our viewers because we're not showing magic. I understand how the world works, but nevertheless, we will discuss magic content. What were we talking about while I stepped out? Uh, we were actually talking choice? about modern... Modern has been a very popular topic tonight. We were discussing earlier the release of the Modern Masters series, which is a draftable, reprint-laden set coming out next June, I believe. June or July, so it's not necessarily right now. But they uh, basically, it's a test project that Wizards is doing to see, is it lucrative, or can they functionally reprint cards from Modern and not alienate people and make it easier to play? Um... One thing that interests me is these packs are a little more expensive, which at first bummed me out. Mm -hmm. But then I realized that it's draftable, so um, 
it's possible to participate in a draft where you win a ton of these packs, which sounds yeah. very exciting. Yeah, they are they are going to be um, sealed product of this set is going to be worth a lot. Yes, it's going to be worth a lot, and uh, people are going to want to draft it. If you, it's very interesting. If you go back and look at that. Old boxes of cards, if you just wanted to have like a throwback draft at your shop and you wanted to go buy and play, if you want to have like, say, an um, Onslaught Block draft, well, I mean, that's going to be very expensive because of the fetch lands. But if you go back and look at some of the Invasion Block or um, like Scourge Block or, or, T- or Temp- uh, Tempest is more expensive, but, um, you know, like even like a Mirrodin Block or like Kamigawa Block, you know, the boxes are more expensive than they were originally because they're older, l- less up. But they're not incredibly expensive. You go back and look at Ravnica block boxes, they are very, very expensive. And the reason is that, yes, they're laden with a lot of top-tier cards that are still worth a lot of money now. But it was like everyone's consensus most, like, everyone's favorite draft format was RGD. So uh, I think that's what, that same effect is going to show itself with the new set that, like like Ian mentions. People are going to want to draft this. So people are going to be hoarding boxes and... Hope it's easy to get. No, it's going to be. They, they, see, one thing is they keep talking about it's a limited run, but like I don't know how limited that is. Yeah. It sounds I'm, like it's it's not going to be as much as say we got for Return to Ravnica, yeah. but it could be as much printed as some of the older sets back in the days. How it sounds, it sounds like like Invasion Block. I believe that was one of the examples that was using that. Uh, you know. That's about the number of packs and stuff we're going to see. If we're, we're not going to see modern day print runs. We're going to see early 2000 print runs, right. which is you know there's a significant yeah, difference I don't between think, the two. I don't think it's going to be a case where you can't get you want cards and you can't get them, but you might it might not be around for as long as you wanted exactly. it to. You know I think it's kind of going to be a, like a, it's going to come out and it's going to burn fast and uh, fast and bright and then it's going to uh, fade away very quickly just in terms of its. Uh, yeah, well, that's one good point to talk about. There is a uh, there is a Grand Prix yeah. specifically for this format. It is in Las Vegas. Oh. Uh, I think it's. I mean, that's. It's, people people are very excited about going to Las Vegas. Yeah. Not simply because it's a resort destination. It's just it has all that kind of debauchery that goes with it. But I mean, you look at it. A lot of your top tier Magic players are also like like aspiring poker professionals. Like that's like all the guys from Seattle, if you follow any of the pros on Twitter or whatnot, um, you know, all of them went directly from Seattle, the Pro Tour, to Las Vegas for a week to play cards. So uh, there's going to be a lot of turnout there. The pros are going to be very excited about this because you can, like I said, you can draft archetypes. You can draft a Storm deck. I mean, like you look at the archetypes you can draft now and return to Ravnica, which is a very popular draft set. I mean, people love it. But uh, I mean, you're drafting like, I'm drafting the Rakdos aggro deck. No, I'm drafting the Celestia mid-range deck. But those are, those are, those aren't decks. Those are just color patterns. You know, I mean, people are going to... You're going to be able to draft Storm. You're going to be able to draft Dredge. You're going to be able to draft, um, you know, tribal decks as well. So should be very interesting. It's, it's if nothing more, it's exciting simply because it's something they've never done before. Uh, that's not true. People have compared this to Chronicles. I don't know if you remember that. That's going way back to when we first started playing Magic yes. in 1994 or 95. They reprint... I think it was 94. They reprinted uh, a bunch of cards from Antiquities and Legends uh, in the Dark um, in a set called Chronicles. None of those cards were any good. Uh, Urnum Jin was, was relevant at the time. Torment's Crypt was a little bit relevant. But um, people were very upset because a lot of, even those Legends cards that were just garbage, six fours with no abilities that cost six, like, the fact was they reprinted them, and now those cards that had a lot of value because of their collector aspect were, you know, they deflated a lot of people's collections, and people got very, and that's, there's actually Chronicles that caused the reserve list. Yeah. People complain about the reserve list. If they had never printed Chronicles, we might not have had the reserve list. I remember Urnum Jin was a very specific example, because they even, like, downgraded its rarity from rare to uncommon, mm-hmm. so there were a lot more Urnum Jins, which is a, was a very, um... And it and important card. Yeah, and if you're not familiar with the standard metagame of 1995, that was all it was. The best thing you could do with four mana was to play an Urnum Jin. Like I care and very then, little about the value of cards, so for me that's exciting. Like I like it when Urnum Jin is easy to get. Yeah, and that, and that's a different. And, and I would say the majority of people who play Magic are are in your demographic. Yeah. Like there's certain people like myself who are a little bit concerned with evaluation of cards that they've invested in and like again when i say invested i don't i don't have a hundred copies of x card because i want to, it to appreciate but i mean you have put a certain amount of, of money in the cards you don't want to see them devalue but uh but i don't know i think most people just want to play with awesome cards and, and that's the thing like and as much as i hate to see tarmogoy free printed 
because it devalues my Tarma Coins. Yeah. Um, if it makes formats like Modern and Legacy as accessible for people, if more people, like for example, we play Legacy here. Two weeks ago we had a Legacy tournament. It's on YouTube, youtube.com slash user slash Zach Sells Magic. You just uh, search on YouTube for Zach Sells Magic and you'll find it. Um, but it was like a three round Legacy tournament, eight people, four people borrowing decks of mine. Because people just don't, you just don't have them. They just can't afford it and stuff like that. And I'm not saying they're obviously not going to reprint the dual lands and stuff. It's still going to be expensive. But if you can get Tarmogoyce for much cheaper, and that causes somebody to play Legacy, versus just like sitting on the sidelines and not, then I ca I can't really complain. I mean, if Magic goes away, like at some point Magic will go away. Just yeah. think about it. Like things, it's very hard to sustain anything for 50, 60, 100 years. You know what I mean? I don't know if it's, you know what I mean? <laughs> you know what I'm talking no, you're about. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Point. yeah, I mean it's not. But I don't know. I, but if you asked me uh, when we were when we were playing in high school, if <laughs> if Magic was still around when I was thirty years old, I would say no way. Well, that's a very interesting thing. And if I ever, I've thought multiple times about having a podcast, and not like a weekly podcast, but like a it's like a once a month like NPR type thing where you just have a topic and you just talk to several people. And the first one I would talk about is why, as when we started we started playing Magic together when we were freshmen in high school, and. We are 32 years old now, and we're still playing Magic. Like, there's not, that's not an incon, that's not, it's not a coincidence. Like, Magic is much more in the mainstream now, and there's something about this game that makes it appealing to both 14-year-old me and you and 32-year-old me and you. It's a very fun game about wizards. You don't, uh, you're not upset that I just mentioned your age on on, on camera. I was right. <laughs> They know how old I am, or at least the people who've watched before, because on my birthday I was in here complaining about how, like, it's my birthday today, and I decided to sit back here in this brick closet. Zach and I did play Magic together in high school. Zach, of course, being 32, I am a <laughs> spry 21. He was. You were, you were a toddler. 21 years young. <laughs> One of those baby geniuses that are running yeah. around in those mm -hmm. movies. Yeah. And do you mean the movie baby geniuses? Yeah. But that is an interesting point that they bring up about, like, you are going to need... Okay, so there were, like, 2,000 people at the limited GP in Philly yeah. last week. And although, I think in Vegas, the numbers would be down slightly because it is West Coast. If you have in Philly, you get a lot of drive-up. But, um... You like, still, six like, packs of piece day one? Yeah, 1,500 people. Yeah, six packs apiece for day one. And then three more for day two, at least. So you're looking at nine times 15 is, I don't even want to do the math, 13,500 packs. Yeah. So they're at least printing that many. <laughs> Not just for including one event. side drafts mm -hmm. and all that stuff. And, you know, at a GP, over two days, there you know, 30 side 40 side drafts will, you know, fire at a GP easily. It'll be interesting <laughs> to see how many people actually show up for the Grand Prix in Vegas, because I imagine it will have the largest number of Magic players in the city, but probably not all of them will make their way to the registration on Saturday morning. Yeah. That's what I always say, like, all these, like, major conventions and, like, all my professional conventions, I work in oil and gas, so they're always in Houston and Dallas and Fort Worth and places like that. But we always talk about having it in Vegas, and I always say if we have it in Vegas, it will be the most highly attended, with the, most, the highest registration with the lowest attendance. Like, everyone will go, there will be 10,000 people come to the come to Vegas for the event and three of them will show up for the actual meeting because uh, you can get yourself into a lot more interesting things at uh, Vegas. A quick bit of business here uh, regarding the stream um, as you've been seeing on our scroll uh, what do we call that? Banner. Ticker. T a banner or ticker. Um, ticker banner. All the different ways you can get in touch with me. Uh, we appreciate you watching the broadcast. Not as many people watching tonight as we've had in the past, probably because we don't have as much magic actually on the camera. I don't know, is somebody else drafting? If someone else is uh, doing a stream, usually we... Uh, it's, hard, it's hard to fight through Michael Jacobs or Michael Jacobs' stream. But, uh, but one thing is, is we always inevitably lose people because, like, when the round is over, then we have to fill time. We uh, either put up a screen and then go take a break, or we do what we do now and talk about magic-related issues that most people aren't interested in. If you go and watch the YouTube videos, you can see when people are watching, and it's always, you know, there's a graph. And when the match is going on, you know, it's a slow drop. And then as soon as the ground is over, it just bottom, bottoms out because no one will see. So my question to you is, excuse me. I always have hiccups when it comes to the stream. As the viewer, as the content consumer, what would you like to see in this in-between that would keep you from a uh, walk, going walkabout, so to speak? So uh, feel free to hit me up on Twitter or at Facebook. Uh, I would appreciate that greatly. I don't really, I mean, at the end of the day, there are 30 people watching this. 
that's 30 more people than I ever thought would. We've maxed out, uh, two weeks ago we had 140 people. Wow. Uh, last week we had about 100. As it gets to the top eight, as we have longer matches, it will accumulate. It's it's this perfect storm of we've had two rounds and two very quick matches, yeah. and it's not late enough for people to get real excited about it, but uh, hopefully things will come back. Chat requests more matches. <laughs> yes, that's, we would love to do that, but you can uh, you can imagine it is very difficult when uh, to predict when... Uh, when, how long rounds are going to go. I should, from now on, only pick control decks to be on camera. I should just find that, I should just rank everyone by the speed of their deck and the slowest decks get on. Um, uh, was there any other business I wanted to talk about? Oh, I will bring this up. Uh, it's ironic that I'll bring, remind me to bring this up later when people are actually watching. But uh, last week we had a couple people uh, inquire about uh, were we doing this for profit? Were we making any money? Were they paying us to do this? Uh, the answers are always no, because that's not necessarily what, what uh, I started the stream for. But based on uh, at least uh, one gentleman's urging, I have set up so that you can now make donations to the stream should you want to. Again, I'm not uh, asking for them necessarily, but there were a few people who were uh, particularly interested in donating to the cause. So at the, uh, if you go to our Twitch stream, twitch.tv slash Magic, most of you are there right now. At the bottom of the screen, there is a chip-in ad. Uh, or not ad, but a little window that shows uh, how you can uh, how you can chip in. Basically, we're just trying to recoup the cost of the equipment. A couple couple cameras and various audio devices and 150 foot of USB cabling. It's, I own an 85 foot USB extension. I don't know how many people do that, but uh, they do cost money. It does add up. So if you feel so inclined, I will not badger you about it. But uh, feel free to go down there. You know, a buck or two is certainly something that uh, we'd appreciate. But I do want to thank uh, our first uh, our first donator. Is that the that's correct word, donator? Mm -hmm. His name is Christian. I will not give out his full name. He lives in Norway, which it just baffles me. It is amazing <laughs> to me that our, we are sitting in a broom closet in a, in, a, in a shop in a state that most people don't recognize as a state of the union. Uh, and uh, a gentleman in Norway is watching our stream and feels so compelled by our product that he would like to donate to the cause so we appreciate christian's generosity if anyone else feels so moved feel free to check that out it's via chip in you pay via paypal but you do not have to have a paypal account to pay you can pay as a guest just using your credit or debit card uh, i'll mention that one more time just so that when more people are watching later on i feel like i can at least thank christian enough with enough people to see it but uh, i will not badger that's because that's really not that's really not the point of this and you also notice that on our youtube channel we don't have like it's not monetized so you don't have to sit through commercials to watch the videos um, i don't know i don't like to do that so i'm not going to make you do that either there's some good um, ideas for content in your chat stream well let's hear it so people are coming back with some ideas what is uh, more matches Deck tech sounds interesting. Yeah, we were going to do that. Uh, that's something we have done in the past. When we see a cool deck out there, we bring somebody in and talk about it and go through it. Um, it's a little bit difficult now because of the logistic constraints of having three of us in here and not having access to the rest of the room, which is uh, something we've lamented multiple times. But half of the room is occupied by some uh, some items that the store, the store is keeping in here that uh, I hope goes away eventually. But what else? No, it's basically just that. So that's something we will we will bring in. People like to talk about decks of magic cards. Yeah. People want to see lists. So we will work on that. If there is dead time, we will we will have someone come in here and sit on Ian's lap and talk about their uh, their deck. That's a win. That's a win win for everybody. I mean, you get a little you get a little play on the side, and uh, we can talk about somebody's spicy new brew. That's the definition of a win win. <laughs> so. Uh, other than that, uh, let's, I just heard JB call time. Uh, I'm going to take a quick break because I need uh, a beverage, a soda. Um, so we're going to take a quick break. Remember, uh, while we're signing off, I will send out the tweet for next week's uh, Rock, Paper, Scissors giveaway. So definitely check that out. Uh, I will send magic cards to your house free of charge. So stick around. We will be back with actual magic in about five minutes.